Some of the most hated and despised men in America are housed on an island in the middle of Puget Sound, tucked away in a place where most of society has forgotten about. They aren't in prison, but they aren't free to leave. Washington State has deemed these men too dangerous to live among everyday law-abiding citizens. This facility is called the Special Commitment Center. One of the men that was housed there was Calvin Malone. He preyed on his victims while he was a scout leader for the Boy Scouts of America. It is believed that his crimes spanned several states and were even international. As he spent a few years in Germany and Switzerland when he was in the military, Malone would hop from Boy Scout group to Boy Scout group when someone was onto him. Even worse was when the Boy Scouts of America allegedly covered up his crime after they feared blame would be placed on them. The Boy Scouts would later be sued and this would make national headlines. In 1993, Malone was convicted of a crime against a child. He would spend the next 19 years in Washington state prisons and when his time for release approached, the state would file for civil commitment they would prevail, and Calvin Malone was a resident of the island. He is now a resident of Olympia, Washington, and is registered as a level three offender. We'll check out stories of the men here later, but first, we'll look at some background at the facility, along with the civil commitment process in Washington. Let's get into it. McNeil Island has a long history of incarceration. Although not as famous as Alcatraz Island, I would say its history is much deeper. The federal government has owned land on the island since 1870, and by 1937, all the land on McNeil Island was government owned. One of the original U.S. penitentiaries was built on the island, USP McNeil Island. It was first a territorial prison before transitioning to a federal prison as part of the Three Prisons Act of 1891. It would become a famed penitentiary with inmates such as Charles Manson and gangster Alvin Karpis. The prison would change hands in the 1980s and the state of Washington would open a state prison. By 1984, the island was fully deeded to the state. The new name? McNeil Island Correction Center. This would remain an operational state prison until 2011. Washington would save $14 million annually by closing this prison. The story of USP McNeil Island deserves its own video and it's something we may look at in the future. While not a prison, the Special Commitment Center is a post-sentence institution that houses some of the most dangerous men in Washington. The story starts in 1990, when Washington became the first state to pass a new law to house some offenders past their prison sentences. Called Civil Commitment, the law was entitled Community Protection Act. They would be labeled sexually violent predators after a trial and verdict from a jury. Soon after the law passed, they converted part of the old prison to house these predators. The Special Commitment Center, as it stands today, was built in 2004 on another part of the island. This new mental health treatment facility cost taxpayers of Washington $61 million. Getting to the facility requires a 20-minute ferry ride from Stillicum Ferry Dock. Once there, a bus will take the new residents to their new home. The locked portion of the facility is called the Total Confinement Facility. It has 228 beds for men with an additional four for women. There is also an 80 bed unit next to it for lower risk residents. Pierce County's Secure Transition Facility also operates on the island. Although not on McNeil Island, there is another transition facility that operates in Seattle. In 2013, the annual cost to house a resident in the Total Confinement Center was a staggering $151,700. I'm sure the cost has only gone up from there. That same report also noted that only 37% of residents were actively participating in treatment. It doesn't seem that they really want to take accountability and change their behavior. According to the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services, which operates the facility, the Special Commitment Center follows a five-step treatment program that all residents must participate in. If a resident declines to participate, they will likely not be granted release. While escapes at the facility are not common, they have occurred. One man came close to making his getaway. Unlike a prison, residents are permitted to wear their own street clothing. Donald Dravis was able to walk out of the facility and make his way to the ferry. The officer at the exit of the facility was fooled by Dravis. He claimed to have been an employee that forgot his ID badge. 
a big mistake by the employee. Luckily, the staff member realized his mistake and was able to catch the ferry with Dravis on it. Dravis was escorted back to the facility. Another resident did make his way off the island. Timothy Webb was able to hide in a tractor trailer loaded with furniture that was taken to the mainland by barge. Webb was caught in Spokane, Washington a week later. The facility also has many of the same issues of prisons. Lawrence Williams, a resident of the facility, conspired with a staff member to smuggle crack cocaine into the facility. He was committed to the facility following his prison term for assault on a woman in the 1980s. On July 30th, 2008, he was charged in federal court with conspiracy to distribute crack cocaine. The drugs were being delivered to Williams through the mail room. Williams would receive a prison term for the offense, but he was released on probation in 2022. Unfortunately for the public, he would re-offend and is accused of assaulting another woman Inappropriate relationships between staff and inmates are alleged to have occurred here. Casper Ross was a resident of the transition facility on the island. He had just spent five years at the Total Confinement Center. As part of the transition program, he was allowed to go to the mainland with an escort. The problem is, is that the escort was allegedly having a relationship with him. The staff member, Nora Cutshaw, was with him at his pre-approved location. When a police officer did an unannounced visit, the police allegedly saw the pair in a disheveled manner, indicating to him that they were involved romantically. Later, staff would find inappropriate photos of Cutshaw and Ross's property. His transition status would be revoked, and he was returned to the Total Confinement Center. If you watched my previous video on Martin Correctional Institution, you know that water quality at prisons isn't always great. In 2017, approximately 200 residents filed a lawsuit after they claimed the cloudy brown water was making them sick. The CEO of the facility said, I don't think there's any evidence that the water has caused a single case of illness out here. It would only take the state six years to remedy the problem. And in 2023, a new water supply was online, providing fresh, clean water to the center. In 2019, the lone woman at the facility was released. Laura Faye McCullum had been at the facility for more than 20 years. She was accused of crimes against children, including an 18-month-old, and had more than 15 victims. McCullum admitted to the crimes and begged to be committed to the facility. She knew that she could not stop herself from offending. McCullum is on the registry in Washington to help protect the public in case she does reoffend. The community in Washington has not been too kind to the release of the residents of the Special Commitment Center. In the small city of Tenino, Washington, there have been protests at the proposal of a small home to house five of these men in a therapeutic setting. One local resident said of the plan, my biggest concern is the fact that my children play outside all day, every day. The facility has no fences that will keep them in. They're allowed to wander about the property. By March, 2023, the plan was scrapped due to the community response. Let me know in the comments how you would feel if this was in your community. The Special Commitment Center at McNeil Island will likely be here for years to come. There isn't much public support to change the process. We'll see what the future holds for facilities like this. This was another Chasing Crime Profile. Thanks for watching. See you next time.